Well, I didn't have a choice. You know, that's why they call it a rock bottom right. moment. You know, that's a great place to build a foundation from. I didn't really have a choice. I knew that I needed to do something different. Um, you know, I received in that moment the gift of desperation. Desperation, when you're in the middle of it, is not a very fun experience. But looking back, recognize that desperation is a gift. Desperation allows for change. Without moments like that, nothing changes, you know? And nothing changes, nothing changes. And so I received the gift of desperation. I was willing to do something different. All right, guys, welcome back to The Power Up Project. My name is Jason Tharp, and I am excited to welcome this, this guest with me, Chris Sourzoff, who is the uh, co-owner of World Class Title. He is also an artist. He is also a traveler, a yogi, a Buddhist, <laughs> a, 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 a spiritual being. He, he's an amazing human who also uh, is very active in the Leukemia and Lymphoma Society of Central Ohio. In fact, I was nominated for their person of the year, actually one person of the year. I don't know what it was, yeah. something. And um, just amazing guy. I've known him for a while. I uh, actually met through, um, we went to the CCD, but we didn't really no. actually know each other then. No, we and, met on the socials. Yes, yes, and I guess CCD, I should really tell people that aren't from this area, mm -hmm. uh, Columbus College of Art and Design, mm -hmm. where we met. And, um, you know, Chris, Chris and I have met and had very deep conversations uh, we've throughout spiritual connections and and just kind of it started if i remember right it was just a, a message to you i'm like how do i know you <laughs> and we just kicked it off on facebook and and started and it's funny because my wife's in real estate and i don't think i've ever talked to you once about anything real estate related thank you <laughs> so uh i want to just jump right in and so we're just going to jump in with this question so okay. let's pretend that you and i are stuck on an elevator i don't know you at okay. all and in this elevator, we know that the one thing that's going to get this thing in moving is inspiration. Mm. And what would be one thing that you would tell a stranger for, about your story that would inspire other people? Well, talk about putting someone on the spot. How would I inspire someone? What are they doing in the elevator? Man, we just, we don't know. We're just stuck. Are they crying? No, it's just you and me, man. We're just stuck here. We're just stuck in we're the just, elevator. We're just stuck in this well, elevator. We have a bigger problem yeah. than wanting to be inspired. <laughs> we need to get the hell out of here. But there's a voice that comes over and it says, like this magical voice says, okay. that all it takes to move this elevator is for you to share something of your story. To me, a stranger, what is it and why should I listen? Well, I, 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 I'm going to have a hard time with this question. I'm going to have a hard time with this question because... My first, um, the first thing I would probably do would not to be telling someone about myself. Mm -hmm. I would probably be asking about them. And I would try for, for, for selfish reasons, because I'd be trying to see if they had any skills that would help us get out of this elevator. <laughs> <laughs> Can you climb well? <laughs> are, are you a loud yeller? Fair enough, yeah. Um, no, I think that, I think, you know, in, inspiration is such an individual thing. I think sharing our stories in a way that shares our experience, our strength, and our hope, I think, is is a really powerful thing because it's it's so unique to us and so unique to um, the struggles that you know we overcome or we are faced with each day. And I think we there's so much of these shared struggles. So I think the inspiration, I think in the way to inspire others is just be honest mm -hmm. and share the pain Yeah, because there's a lot of suffering that's happening right now. And there's a lot of suffering in silence. And I think when we're able to share that experience of, Hey, I was in a lot of pain and I'm not anymore. And here's what happened. Right. But I don't know how you do that in a 15 second elevator conversation. Right. Well, you know, I, in my own, my own experiences, I've, I've had my fair share of struggles and yeah. pain as well. Mm -hmm. But what would be something that you would say is a, has been or is a struggle for you yourself? Has been or is currently? I think, um, I think we all are suffering from the human condition. Right. You know, I think the the whole purpose while we're here is to suffer and evolve and and overcome. Um, from myself, you know, I I think 
just going back, I, I grew up in a environment where it wasn't necessarily um, safe or there wasn't a lot of space for me to, to express my emotions. Mm -hmm. And so what impact that had on me as an adult is I looked for escapes and ways to express emotions. And it was the earliest one for me was alcohol. Mm -hmm. Alcohol was an amazing tool to let down my defenses and um, guard to be able to express whatever emotions needed to come out. Right. They needed to come out. I just didn't have a way for them for that to happen. And that was, you know, alcohol was great for that. If I was happy, I was happier. If I was sad, I was sadder. If I needed to cry, I cried. If I needed to get angry, I got angry. And that worked for a long time until inevitably things like that just stopped working right. and they turn on you. Right. And that's ultimately what happened. And I think that for me is where my story really begins. Right. So what, what was it that you experienced in that, let's just call it rock bottom moment mm -hmm. that kind of made you turn the mirror and kind of look at yourself? Well, I think each, you know, I, I think, I think anyone that has, um, problem, whether it's alcohol or any kind of addiction, whether it's alcohol or drugs or sex or food or gambling or money or you name it, whatever we're using to fill this hole, you know, I knew each day when I woke up, I knew it was killing me. I knew it was slowly killing me, which is way more painful than dying quickly. <laughs> mm -hmm. You know, it's like just get hit by a train. That's going to happen like this. Right. But if each day I wake up and I know them slowly killing myself. One day I had been playing in a golf outing and I had been playing in this tournament and I wasn't playing well. And it was someone I was playing with suggested that uh, maybe I should drink vodka because I played better when I drank vodka, mm -hmm. but it was 10 in the morning. So I had this dilemma. I knew that if I started drinking vodka at 10 in the morning, at some point I was going to be blacked out and I was not going to be in good shape. And I knew this, but I also figured, well, I could, I could start to becomes a experience of like spinning plates. I could drink some vodka and then I could drink some beer and then I could kind of level it out maybe later with some wine. Well, by the end of the night, I'm a mess and I'm blacked out and I'm just mean and I'm angry. And the only person around that I could really be mean and angry with was my ex-wife, you know, not physically, but mentally and emotionally. And so the next day I woke up, that's what happened. I woke up the next day and I just um, didn't really remember what happened, but I knew something happened and I knew it wasn't good. And a few hours go by, I'm still kind of questioning what happened. She's not talking to me, which is usually a good indication that something mm -hmm. happened. And she uh, eventually came to me and said, listen, I love you and I'll do whatever I can to help you, but I didn't sign up for this. Mm -hmm. And I was, I was waiting for a fight. I was waiting for a battle. I knew how to like manipulate that into, you know, I could be on good behavior for a few weeks and be back to doing my thing. But this time there was no fight. There was no battle. And I knew she was right. I knew she was right. And I, I, I curled up in the fetal position, laying on the floor and I just looked up and I just went, you know, help. Right. Like, I don't know who or what I'm asking for help, but I can't do this anymore. Mm. I happened to be watching this documentary that that morning of, on Ozzy Osbourne. And in the documentary, he had like five years sober. And I remember thinking, oh, maybe, maybe if the like Prince of, darkness could get mm -hmm. sober <laughs> maybe i could get sober, yeah. but i had no clue what that meant right no clue no clue even to where to begin yeah it, it it's well first off to celebrate you um you had a milestone this year right how how, how long sober are you that was july 29th 2012 that's amazing and um a week later we found out that my ex-wife was pregnant with our daughter wow and i was yeah. like okay looking up again yeah. it's going i get it I've had, I've had, um, and I know I've shared them with you, like countless times where it's like the universe just kind of taps himself on your shoulder and, and it's like, pay attention to this moment. Yeah. Like if you could like describe, cause I know what it's like for me. 
um, when I had that rock bottom moment. Mm -hmm. Could you describe that feeling of what it felt like to, to let go? Mm -hmm. Well, I didn't have a choice. Mm -hmm. You know, that's why they call it a rock bottom right. moment. You know, that's a great place to build a foundation from. Right. I didn't really have a choice. I knew that I needed to do something different. Um, you know, I received in that moment the gift of desperation. Mm -hmm. Desperation, when you're in the middle of it, is not a very fun experience. But looking back, recognize that desperation is a gift. Mm -hmm. Desperation allows for change. Without moments like that, nothing changes, mm -hmm. you know, and nothing changes, nothing changes. And so I received the gift of desperation. I was willing to do something different. Right. I didn't know what that meant, but I knew that what I was doing wasn't working. Yeah, I, I just want to like echo that back so everybody that's listening pays attention to this part. Like the the importance of when this moment happens, and everybody knows when that moment happens, that what feels like the worst thing, mm -hmm. it's almost like fear and happiness mm -hmm. are teetering on mm -hmm. an edge. And you have to be okay with that mm -hmm. and understand that like, I think we all want happiness. Like you said, we want to escape whatever it is and we look for different things. You know, how do you find now, these years later, looking back at that story? I know with my story, I still have conversations with that version of me. Mm. Do you ever, do you ever reflect on that yourself and bring it to the present moment to almost like have a come to Chris moment that maybe you're struggling with something and you can kind of have that conversation in your head with during meditation a lot of time for me. Um, do you ever have that yourself? I will tell you that that person feels like it feels like an entire, an entirely different life. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I believe that each day I have a choice that I can have that old life anytime I want it. Mm -hmm. If I decide that's what I want, you're not going to stop me. Mm -hmm. So I have to decide and make a decision every day that's just, that's just not what I want anymore. I did that. You know, if I want that misery, I can go get it. I'm just not interested in that. Right. And so I have to every day make a choice like what kind of life do I live? And I think that you and I share this. And I think anyone who's been through these types of situations understands that there's a significant power to not really being afraid of dying. Mm -hmm. Like it's, and, and it's, 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 I don't think it's even that people are afraid of dying. I think people are afraid of living. Mm -hmm. And I think when you get a fear of death and you overcome that and you recognize that, like, I know what it's like to die. I was killing myself every day. Right. I didn't, I didn't care. Right. Well, well what does it mean to actually live? Right. And so now my focus has to be on the living. It's not on the dying. Right. I'm not afraid. I, I don't want to die. I like my life, but I'm not afraid of it. Right. I'm not afraid of it. I'm more afraid of the things I don't get to do mm. and not living my life to that level. That, and I wouldn't call that a fear, but I think that I don't want that looking back to be a great regret that I didn't fit in as much as I could. I want to be able to go out in many years from now and say, I'm ready, right. it's time. Right. And have that last, you know, beautiful spiritual experience. That's what death ultimately is, right. is the last great spiritual experience, not to be medicated up and numbed out on that side of it either. You know, that's my goal. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, it, I, that, dude, I mean, that, that's awesome. I mean, I, I, re I resonate with that so much and I know so many people will too. And it, it is amazing to me, and, and tell me if you agree or disagree, that the version of you that comes out on the other side of somebody either telling you or you recognizing your own mortality mm -hmm. and the release of mm, the right. trauma that that's comes right. from that. That's right. When that happens, I, can, I've tried, and I, I think I do an okay job of, but I'd love to hear how you capture that mm. into a, you know, a, a 
motivational thing or some sort of way that people can understand that because there should be somebody that listened to this right now that is exactly where you were mm -hmm. and having those moments yeah. you know um and it's scary as hell man like I, I always say that like the version of you you're waiting for is on the other side, all those fears that you're avoiding. It's all, everything's fear. Yeah. It's all fear. So if you, if you could like maybe s bottle that up into a little magic pill that somebody could take and say like, okay, today I can put down the drink or today I can yeah. stop doing these things. What, what would you say to that person? Well, the unfortunate reality is it's pain. Mm -hmm. It's pain. Are you done? Mm -hmm. Have you had enough pain? And we get to choose when we've had enough pain. We can be done at any time, but it's a choice. It's a choice. You know, you didn't have a choice to be diagnosed with brain cancer, but you had a choice of what you were going to do next. Mm -hmm. You had a choice to what doctors you were going to listen to. You had a choice of how you were going to take care of your body. You had a choice of what you were going to allow into your thinking. You, you, when we have choice, we become empowered. We're not victims. You're not a victim. Mm. You have brain cancer. All right. Big, big fucking deal. Right. Now what? Right. You know, I, I relied on alcohol to process my emotions because I had no other tools and it turned on me. Okay. Now what? Mm. Right. So now the, 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 you know, the, you know, how pearls are made, right? Yeah. It's an irritant mm -hmm. within that shell yeah and this is the irritant so what do you use to turn it into the pearl and so i think if someone is in that place today it's a place of significant pain the, the hope is that recognizing that they're you're not alone mm. it's a place also of extreme isolation you know we're only as sick as our secrets and so there's a lot of isolation that happens and so it's you know, whether it's, if for example, for drinking, a lot of times towards the end, it's, you're not drinking to be social. You're not drinking out at bars. Mm -hmm. You're drinking at home alone. Mm -hmm. And you, the last thing you want to do is talk to people. Right. It's very isolating. It's very painful. And at the end of the day, have you had enough pain? If you had enough pain, the good news and the hope is that there are people out here who have had these experiences. You can find them. Right. You can find them. They're readily available and they want to help because when they help, it helps them. Right. And the hope at the end of the day is maybe if I get better, I can help somebody else. Right. Yeah. That that that, that ultimately for me, um, in in accepting, you know me for all my flaws. I mean, that's where it started mm -hmm. was very much. I thought I was kind of dealing with my issues. You know, I, I was putting band-aids on them. Right? Yeah. Right. And then the diagnosis kind of opened, it kicked the door open. Yeah, for sure. And it started for me with like, why do I hate myself so much? Yeah. You know, and so I can relate to that moment and you have to walk through the shit. And, and I think that just scares the hell out of people so much because in that walking through it, I think they think that they're going to pick up bad habits, but I think it's the exact opposite, right? <laughs> what do you think? Well, I don't, again, like a gift of desperation. Right. What choice do you have? Right. <laughs> like, right. go be miserable. Yeah. You're allowed. Right. It's a free country. Yeah. You can be as miserable as you want. Yeah. You can be as miserable you, as you want. You know, we have this idea that like being happy is easy, right? Like, happiness isn't easy. No. Happiness is really hard. Happiness is really, it's kind of, removing away all of the things that don't make you happy. Right. And that's people, places, and things that don't support our happiness. And I think there's a lot of fear there. Well, I want to make this change, but it might mean I don't talk to this other person anymore. Good. Right. right. Well, that person's my mother. That person's my family member. That person's my brother or sister or whatever. Good. Good. You know, there's so much when it comes to the, when it comes to whether it's addiction or alcoholism or, or whatever you got, it's, there's so much self-abandonment. Self-abandonment is really, it, and I think it, this stuff kind of gets kicked off at a young age for most of us. Most of us that experience some type of trauma or emotional trauma or physical trauma or sexual trauma, whatever the trauma is, generally it's going to happen at an early age. And there's some type of self-abandonment we feel abandoned by a parent or someone close to us. And then as adults, 
what happens is we abandon ourselves mm. because that's what's comfortable. It's what we know. And so self-abandonment, what it starts to look like is um, lack of boundaries. It can look like uh, unworthiness. I'm not worthy. I hate myself. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm abandoning this core self of who I really am because that's comfortable to me. Mm -hmm. I don't know any different. Right. This is what I know. This is what feels good. This is how I, this is how I felt as a child. Yeah. And so getting connected, you know, I've been doing a lot of work on getting connected to this younger self all the way back, all the way back as far as I can go. And really like, what does that core wounding look like? What is those core things that happen and how do I, and generally you can do this through meditation, you know, the young inner child work stuff. You can go in and you can show up today as the man you are today for that four-year-old or three-year-old or two-year-old and be like, you know, this wasn't okay. Yeah. This wasn't okay, but you're okay now. Yeah. You're safe now. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, it is amazing. Um, when I talk about talking to the old me, it, it is, yeah. it's six-year-old me. Yeah. It's not old me from yeah. when I hated myself. That's right. Because that person yeah. was a result of that six-year-old. Yeah. And I, and I, I'm, I'm working on a new book right now where I'm, I'm writing letters to old me. Mm. And um, the other day I had this uh, epiphany in the middle of writing it. I said, uh, holy shit, I realized all along you knew this was all going to happen. Yeah. Right. And I'm like, what if, what if that little version of us is fear and love all in the same thing? Yeah. And it's been trailing behind us the whole time. Mm. And I know for me, um, the moment when I kind of let go, you know, I thought I was alone then. Mm. And it was just almost like I felt like a, a peripheral turn to the left. Mm. And there was the little me that was love. It was like, where you been? Yeah, right. Right? Yeah. And, you know, you, you mentioned meditation and, and seeking happiness and how happiness is a struggle. Like, what are some things that you do um, to find that love for yourself, find the happiness that to get through that struggle, those things? I think it's important that we all, um, that we all find our own peace and happiness and we dedicate energy to it. I think for me, like my, my mornings are mine. Mm. And so I have to build the right kind of momentum in the morning and not get swept up by the day. You know, I have to build momentum in the morning that is, um, whether it's through meditation, whether it's through movement, whether it's walking, going to the gym, um, taking time for my daughter, taking time for my dog, taking time for myself. Because I have to, what's important for me today is that I show up as a safe, uh, consistent Chris. Mm. Um, I think for men, especially the most important thing that we can do is, is create safety for those around us. Mm. Safety is the base core need we all have. Kids, women, men, all of us, we have a core need to be safe. If that core need isn't met, this is why so many people struggle during COVID because we felt unsafe. Right. If that core need isn't met, then it's very hard to do anything else. It's very hard to, and this aligns with like chakra systems and everything else, but it becomes very hard to reproduce. You know, if you are in a relationship and you're trying to reproduce and you don't feel safe, you're not going to reproduce. Right. It becomes hard to experience jo happiness and joy. It becomes hard to get, get into your heart and love and then into your throat and your, your truth. Mm -hmm and then be able to have a clear vision of what you want in your future and a connection ultimately to whatever is out there. And so whatever, whatever commitment that needs to be made to ourselves, that has to be the first thing of the day. Maybe it means I have to wake up earlier. Okay. Right. Maybe it means I end my day and I have to set my morning up in order to come into that place because the alternative is we, the day runs us. We don't own and run our lives and our days. We don't own and run our days. We don't own and run our lives. It gets run for us. Yeah. And then we get carried away. It's, 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 we become 
swept up in all of the stuff, all of the stuff. Yeah. And, and that ultimately leads to this cycle. Uh, I'm, I'm discontent. I'm upset. I need to soothe. I need my thing, whatever it is, shopping, gambling, alcohol. Oh, what a relief. Feel better. Right. And I wake up in the morning and I feel guilt and shame. And so I have to get back into some relief. Yeah. And that's the cycle of addiction. Yeah, absolutely. And it, it, it is interesting that you mentioned the cycle of addiction that way, because I think when I did the same, again, everybody listening, the importance of morning routines, yeah. like to really set yourself. I mean, essentially what you're doing, is you're setting yourself up to win. And it, yeah. And a daily, a daily spiritual practice yeah. is for me, that's the, at the core, right? That's Same. the core, yeah. the, a daily spiritual connection practice. For me, it's best in the morning. Um, but yes, that's, and that's a, that's, that's the opposite of self abandonment, right? that's actually putting the energy into self in a positive, healthy way. Absolutely. And so you mentioned earlier that emotions were a struggle. Have you noticed in your doing your routines and going through all this process, what is your relationship with emotions now? I love my emotions now. Yeah. I feel everything. Yeah. I felt nothing before. That's why I did what I did, because I didn't want it. Now I feel everything. It's a blessing and it's a curse. Right. Because I feel everything. Yeah. You know, I've had more pain, way more pain being sober than I ever had when I was drinking. Mm -hmm. You know, even recently doing this for over 10 years, mm -hmm. had some of the most painful experiences of my life. And I have to sit in it and I have to feel it and I have to experience it. I have to let it burn. Because ultimately I know that I, I think of it as the best way to, the best analogy is like a forest fire. Forests needs forests need fire. They need to be removed of the dead debris and stuff so the new can grow. Mm. And we're the same way. And so this pain, the pain is really, it's just a fire that I have to sit in and sit in and with the faith that I know it's burning up something I no longer need. It's burning up this debris and stuff I just don't need anymore. I'm shedding a skin. And I know I've done it enough now that on the other side of it is a new, beautiful opening. Something's mm -hmm. coming. I don't know what. Right. Something's coming. Yeah. And so my responsibility to myself is to create an environment where whatever's coming, the new beauty can grow, can be watered, yeah. it can be sunlight. Yeah. And that's where the really special stuff comes. That's amazing. You've definitely evolved a lot, my friends. <laughs> and uh, I, I wonder if if you could go back and, you know, I, I pose this question to everybody. So, uh, you know, if you've heard any of them, you've heard this question. So um, if you could take what you know now and go back to any point in time in your life. Mm -hmm. And I define a power up as turning your attention into your intention, right? If you could take what you know now and go back to any point in your life, what would be one power up that you would give to yourself and why would you do that? I think what you said earlier about going back to these early ages where we're it's just these beautiful souls, happy, joyous, free, and something happens. Mm. You know, you look at kids and you look at animals and you look at nature and it's so happy and free and something happens something happens as adults that we lose it mm -hmm. and we we you know we we how many of us think oh i'm not going to be like this person or that person and guess what we're worse mm -hmm. and so i think that i think that it would it would be going back into that younger self and you know uh finding a way finding a way to help him process, support his emotions in a safe way, in a way that, um, you know, it's, it's, it's a tough question though, Jason, because 
you know, I'm just, I'm grateful for all of those things mm -hmm. too, right? Like, I don't know that I would do it over. Right. I don't know that I would do it differently because that's not my life. Right. Sometimes I wish it was, I think it'd be easier. Mm -hmm. I think it'd be a lot easier. And sometimes this stuff, it's just, even now it's like, do I really have to peel back this layer of that onion again? Like there's more to, there's more layers. Mm -hmm. And it's like, man, shit, this doesn't end. <laughs> it just yeah. keeps going. So, you know, it's a tough question. I think it's a good question, but it's hard because without that irritant, the pearl doesn't come. Mm. So, you know, and maybe it still comes, it's just different, but I just, the evolution is so beautiful. Mm. And I love having opportunity to be able to, to, think about this and share it in this way. I think about these things a lot, you know, so being able to be able to like actually articulate it in a way that maybe somebody finds a little bit of value in is just, that's also part of the gift, meeting people like you mm -hmm. and seeing how exponentially you've taken your lessons and your skills and your talents and are creating these safe spaces for these kids. Mm -hmm. That is beautiful you know, kids using art to express themselves. Yeah. yeah. I appreciate that, man. Jesus, you got me on that one too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, I, I want to respect your time and, uh, I do this all day. Yeah, I know I'm not that busy. It, it is, it is one of those things where, you know, it seems like this is usually when we get together, how it, it rolls. It's yeah. kind of, it starts out kind of all over, but then it kind of gets into this focused and there's usually a core of i think that you and i have a very kindred spirit of mm. that broken kid mm. and, and and growing up as almost a broken adult mm. and trying mm -hmm. to heal that mm -hmm. and you know i just want to i just want to like just tell you man like i'm really happy for you mm. and really proud of the fact that of what you've overcome um you know and I, I genuinely mean that i know people a lot of times will tell you oh you're amazing for all the stuff that you're doing and stuff like that and you know, and I know you on a, a on a different level, and I just um, well, you know, how much I appreciate you being in this world. Thank you, my friend. And I'm happy that you went through the shit you went through. Mm. And I agree with you. The question <laughs> is hard. It's meant to be. Yeah. Because I don't know if I would change a lot yeah. either. Um, but it sure would feel good to <laughs> just go back and pat that kid on the back yeah. and say it's going to be okay. Yeah. Um, so, Chris. Um, just to kind of close it off, is there anything that people, if they want to follow you, like what, you know, there'll be, uh, your bio is going to be in the uh -huh. show notes. I'll make sure that your social links and stuff like that. But is there any you know, closing things that you'd like people, if they want to get in touch with you or, or just follow along in your journey or anything like that, that you would like to, to say? Yeah, I'm, a, I'm on all the socials. I'm available. I'm easy to find. Uh, I, if, if there is anyone who's suffering, there's no need to suffer in silence. You know, reach out, ask for help. Um, there's a lot of people who are willing and able to, to help and there's no need to do it alone and to be alone. And, you know, that's ultimately what this is all about. This whole thing is about oneness and connection. You know, we think we're so different and we think we're so separate and there's a lot of people out there trying to use our differences to distract us and keep us apart. But at the end of the day, we are all just one consciousness who need each other mm. even if we don't like each other right. we still got to love each other dude I, I can't think of a better way to end that man. <laughs> i love you thank you for showing you, up brother. today uh being here and sharing with everybody and uh guys if you got any value out of this make sure that you're sharing this with somebody um it's really important uh, this is how we we have the impact that we're looking for is uh people stepping into the bravery of sharing their stories with the intentions of helping somebody else, not just necessarily for us. So uh, I appreciate you being here. Thank you so much, guys. And uh, this is the Power of Project. Foxland Media, think big.